it, this it conference be will have, now be uh, recorded. This kind of question. So we're going to have such crazy things coming up. Uh, keep hold your tongue. Please don't scold me for such a silly questions coming up. <laughs> okay, let's go for the next question. Okay. Okay, it's it, the fastest finger first. What do you answer? I want to see the answer, 75. <laughs> at least that's a typo it's okay at least around you and hostess is all on our side okay 72 56 how is that 75 how is that 52 the number of attorneys are 27 here and the hostess i'm not going to leak you the answer for now <laughs> let's see okay 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 <laughs> 30. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to tell you the answer now. So the current number of attendees is, uh, I guess it's it's 25 attendees into two. It's 50. So it's 26 now. <laughs> okay, we'll go with few things. I need 50s here, 54, 56, 52. There, you're also closer. Uh, okay, let me go with 26 into two then. It's 52, okay. So there are kind of your answers like 52. Yeah, it's good, it's good, it's good, okay. But 52, who is the one who answered it first? Uh, Bibi and Pranit, okay. Yeah, Bibi and Pranit, Pranit, you're the, answer, you're the winner for this specific question. <laughs> Keep the fire up, we are gonna go for the next, uh, the same kind of questions, all right? Uh, okay. <laughs> what color is white paper? No, I know the answers. It's not like the first answer, but it's I'm very sure. What color is the white paper? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> black. Abhishek. Okay. White, 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 black, black. Okay. Black Neeraj. Blanket side. White. Two oh Akash. Uh, he, he's going with two five five, two five five, two five. Hex go. No. <laughs> Gray, how is that? Oh. <laughs> okay, really good, really good coming up. Okay, the answer is uh, what color is white paper? It's white. Okay, <laughs> it's totally white. I, I hope most of you answered it well. <laughs> the hash color code is also coming up. FF, it's okay. So the answer is white. Let me see who answered it first. Rohit. Rohit is the one who answered it first for now. Okay, Rohit, you're the winner for this question. Let's go. Let's go for the next one. Uh, white, there is no uh, kind of a conflicts between this. I just mentioned what color is white paper. Okay, white paper, the white is a color, it's an adjective, if I'm, if I'm so sure about it. All right, let's go for the next one. Okay, yeah. So as we go ahead, the toughness and the hardness of the questions goes higher. Okay, let's see how many of you will answer this. If a peacock lays an egg every day and there are two peacocks, how many eggs will you will you have after one week? 14, 2, uh, 2, okay, 14, 0, peacock is male, 7, okay, 0, 0, 0, 14, okay, I'm wrong, 14, Recon reconnecting, who, who are you? <laughs> reconnecting, it's kind of crazy names coming up, okay. We always see one name very common, that's, uh, you know who am I, but the next one is like, okay, <laughs> reconnecting, peacock, peacock doesn't lay eggs, okay, 14, 14, okay. All right, all right. So the answer is zero <laughs> because Peacock doesn't lay any eggs. Uh, it started with the reason Hamid said two, and who know who you know who I am is the one uh, for this question. He said first that is zero. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let's see how the question, how the next question would be. Yeah. <laughs> Brown yellow, brown yellow, okay. <laughs> brown, hello. <laughs> I know, I know how tough is that. I know, I know because I even I faced it the same when I tried answering these questions. It was so terrific. 
maybe. <laughs> no, no part of maybe, nothing. There is only one answer here. Yeah. Okay, chocolate color. Oh my God, chocolate one. <laughs> Soil color. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The creativity touches the peaks during the calendar. Okay, yellow. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you the answer. Uh, the answer is brown. Okay, nothing about it. I just highlighted the soil in yellow color. It doesn't mean the soil need to be in yellow color. Okay, that was just a highlight. So the answer is brown. So let me see who answered it first. Um, hello, 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 brown. Krish. Okay, Krish. Krish Nandu. Yeah, man. Good going. Yeah, Krish got the first one. You are the winner for this question. Funny? No, I'm very serious. It's not funny. I just had it. <laughs> All right, let's go for the next question. I hope we have one more. Yeah, yeah, okay. Please hold your tongue before you scold me. <laughs> you are my brother, but I'm not your brother. Who am I? Oh my God. Mentor, senior. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> cool, cool. You. <laughs> there are a lot of answers for this. Okay, but there is one single answer which is a, like a universal answer. Okay, most of you got it. It's sister only. So let me see who did it first. Uh, Rajiv, senior, uh, Bhavesh, mentor. No. <laughs> yeah, Krish. Krish, you are on the leaderboard now. You are on the top position. You answer two questions perfectly. And that answer is sister. <laughs> okay, let me know. I don't know whether we have one more question, but let's see what it is. Yeah, we have one more. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Let me see how it is. Friend? No, 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 no way, friend. <laughs> Where do you find roads without vehicles, forests without trees, and uh, a city without house? Uh, you're coming closer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Google Maps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> maps okay yeah 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 <laughs> cool cool you guys are really really amazing i didn't expect such a kind of such a kind of response such quick yeah the answer is all you got you guys did the most it's atlas map google maps even the google maps or whatever the maps are there you can say uber you can say ola maps as well <laughs> so all of them yeah chris you're in the top position now you answer three questions correctly and you're the one who said who gave the answer for the first yeah and atlas yeah we can go with that Okay, let me see the next one. I don't think so, we have one. Okay, we have one, what it is, let's see. <laughs> Color of red, no? You gotta be really specific. You, you, you gotta tell me what, no, 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 you're not gonna tell me whether it's a red or green, or I didn't say that, I'm asking you what is the first question? What is the first question? You have to be so specific about the sentence that you type in. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry. Okay, let me go to the first question and check it out. Even, uh, sorry, I don't even remember that. <laughs> okay, which color is red? Is a, which color is red? Okay, let me see from the beginning. Uh, Low, green or red, which color was which color was red? Drew, you just missed it. Just like the tense you used past tense. Uh, what is red? No way. Which color is which color is red? No, you 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 missed that with the spelling. Check out the spelling, Avan. Avan, uh, it's C-O-L-O-R. Okay, Amarnan, what is color of red? No, no, you're so close, but no. What is color of red? Oh no. What which color is red? Uh, which color is red? Cool, yeah, we got Abhishek, yeah. I think he answered after that, oh, okay, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, which Abhishek, you, you won it finally, yeah, this is the first question you won it, but uh, I can conclude that uh, Krish was the one who, who won this quiz, like in the top position with three answers, giving up, although they are lame, okay. <laughs> although they are the lame questions in the other side as well. Okay. <laughs> so what's the price? Okay, there's a nothing price for this. It's all why we are doing is just for having fun during the quarantine. I know how hard it is to be in your home just like that. I know you've been smiling it since a while, but smiling or laughing from the inside can take some, some time. And now I hope you all had it at least a little. 
So if I if I did it the most, I'm really done for the day. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. All right. So here we go. So today's session, why we are doing these all this, just to have the interactions with you and uh, make you use uh, the chat box, you know, flexible and get used to using the chat box. Another one is we are also waiting for the other people to join with us. So not to lag, but to have some time with you. That's it. Okay. So we're going to start the session. So the whole purpose of today's session, uh, why we are all here and main specific reason is, you know, this thing is so specific. You know, when we, I, I have been a lot of questions coming up in Instagram, emails, like anything, they just say that uh, the competitive programming questions where you maybe go for any platform, any platform, no matter platform independent, the things goes up. We try to understand the question. That's the first level. We try to understand the questions better. And it takes some more time than usual time, rather comparing to other questions, it takes some more time. But finally, once we understood the questions, even though we got the logic, but we failed to implement it, even though you have a good grip in the in the programming language that you are in. Okay, these are the very basic, very basic questions that we usually found around, even we experience most of the times when we try to solve real time the state structures and competitive programming questions. Okay. So even I face it a lot, even I'm facing it now as well. Okay, so that's how it always goes, the data structures and algorithms and competitive programming. These are all the things are challenging. Okay, I don't, I don't say they are really easy, they are really, really challenging, but I really mean it. Because when you go, these are the one thing tool where companies literally judges you. Okay, they literally judge you how good you are at thinking, how good you are at implementing and how good you are at listening and speak, you know, listening and understanding and making the intuition better and understanding the one thing is another level and implementing with the thing of your intuition is another thing okay so that is the phases that we have but you know but having these things in a set and jumping it without a proper grip or a proper kind of a bird eye view will actually makes us and now will actually makes us uh, deep dive into down okay so that shouldn't uh, that shouldn't happen okay the whole intention of the session is to support you, is to give you a push. If you're not into complete programming, it's gonna be really a good push for you to get to understand about it and you're gonna go and give a deep, deep dive and where to start, what to do, and what are all the things required, and you're gonna get this all, okay? So, and on the next thing, if you're already into pro competitive programming, it still helps you in a different way. And that's how Harsh is gonna, be, Harsh is gonna do with us. And that is his whole thing today. And he has a lot of plethora of sources that he could share with us. Okay, uh, over to you, Harsh. Please go ahead. Thank you for joining us. You can click on the present screen and you can go ahead, Harsh. Hello everyone. Is my voice audible? Yes, Harsh, I can hear you. Ah, okay. So uh, one request so, that I want to make to you all, uh, one request, sorry, Harsh. Yeah. So if you feel very hard to type anything in the chat box of your questions, feel free to unmute yourself and just express it. Okay, not to worry about typing or any uh, any of the things, any of the things. Just go ahead and mute yourself and uh, make sure your background noise is not so high, just, just to not to disturb the other people who are also listening and concentrating on it, okay? Go ahead, Harsh. So, hello everyone. My name is Harsh and I'm a member of Developer Students Club and Satyabhama Coding Club. I'm also a Microsoft student partner representing our college in the MSP program and organizing virtual events in the field of machine learning, quantum computing, and version control tools like it. I'm currently in my second year, and I'm working as a chatbot developer at Scholify and a technical content reviewer at Geeks for Geeks. I'm also a hobby competitive programmer, and I'm a two-star coder on CodeChef, and I have participated in a couple of competitive coding contests like Long Challenge, Hash Code, and internal competitions held in our college. So that was it from my side. So let's get started with our session on intro to competitive programming. So let's get started with competitive programming. To make the session more interactive and help everyone capitalize on the experience and their knowledge about coding, I would, like, I would like to ask anyone willing to share their experience to unmute themselves and state their experience about competitive programming. You can share what problems you have faced or how are you planning to start competitive programming. At the end of the day, it is all about best practices and how we can capitalize on it. 
if anyone is willing they can share their thoughts about the subject before we can get started with it yeah harsh we have a suggestion along with that uh, you can better slow down the voice in a slow pace so that uh, the weak internet, the issue is there are a lot of people who are having some weak internet connections, like poor internet. So you could slow down and then move ahead as how I do it slowly, okay? So that they could grab it when the internet lacks as well, okay? Yeah, okay, if you good, have sure, any experience, sure. you can open up and, and, and share your experience with Harsh. It's just to have really good interaction. Please unmute yourself and share your experience. So, Arsh, uh, yeah, I used to face some problems while, when it comes to programming, like computer programming. The first thing is understanding the problem statement. That is most, uh, like, we don't even know, like, it, it'd be like a story. We just need to understand what is the problem. And we won't be knowing, right, what end of concept we are going to use in that. Unless we know that we are trying to move further, like, for solving, unless we know the concept of uh, like the prop statement so how do you figure out uh, these things like when it comes to prop, like solving prop? so if anyone else is willing to share their thoughts they can do it now it will be a real pleasure for all to share their thoughts so that we can have a good interactive session uh we can start the computer recording by first of all learning the computer language so we can start with that yeah that is yeah that is a necessity yeah after that uh we should learn right so we can go to google and uh, search for some problems and we, we can try to solve that and uh can search for the solution just check if it's correct or not yeah it is also correct babe. yeah so that's uh that's how to start the computer recording right uh actually competitive coding is more about solving any problem within a specific time and space complexity so let's say yeah, i'm uh, learn, right. yeah yeah so let me say let's say i want to solve a fibonacci problem i want to find the 58 fibonacci number so it is not necessary that i will use only an iterative way or a recursive way to solve the problem we have to use some other uh, ways also so that we can optimize the problem competitive yeah. coding that is about optimizing and optimizing yeah. yeah the diamond space should be reduced right yeah 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 so i think anyone else is willing to share their experience i think we are good to go ahead harsh yeah okay so great so let's get started with the session and get the balls rolling in this session we will be covering an intro to competitive programming and some of the most important questions that revolve around it what it is how to start doing competitive programming the various techniques and method methodologies uh, just wait a second uh, is my screen visible yeah it's visible Uh, the best platforms to start competitive uh, coding and lastly i will be sharing some awesome resources which can help you to understand competitive coding in a much easier way and help you to crack questions in or contests and interviews so what is competitive coding actually dealing it dealing with in technical terms it is actually a mental sport where we have to solve a problem using programming in a fixed time and space complexity competitive coding has been designed and implemented in a manner to foster problem solving and while it tests your problem solving, it also verifies that you understand the language, syntax, and capitalize on some of its most powerful features. In last few months, especially after the COVID-19 lockdown, I have been doing a lot of competitive coding on platforms like Hacker Earth and CodeShift. And in my personal experience, it is always an adrenaline rush. However, the situation is not always the same. In many times, competitive programmers get frustrated and end up in a pause for weeks and even months before they can pick themselves up and get started doing it. So competitive programming is demanding and it takes your insight on the problem and the intuition that you hold both into account, which determines how you can solve the problem. There is neither a shortcut for it. And many a times it happens that the, prob that the uh, people freeze out seeing a question. It is not that they don't understand the problem, 
but the problem is that they don't know the correct ways in how they can crack the problem so let me take a popular example from our times i expect that as an engineering student you all must have heard about joint entrance examinations or even the satyabhama entrance examinations that are being held to induct students into into the undergraduate programs most of the concepts that are being taught like gravity fluid mechanics laws of motion they revolve around the same concept that were taught back in class 8 or class 10 but if i give a similar question to any class 8 or class 10 student that we normally see in entrance examinations will they be able to solve it unless they are a genius or a prodigy it is not expected for them to solve competitive programming is a similar subject in indian colleges specifically the majority of the focus is held on learning new technologies and languages but we never give attention on how we can solve the problems using them we might have learned problem solving techniques back in our first semester data structures advanced data structures and even the design and analysis of algorithms but what we completely miss out is how we can use them to solve the problems while we scratch the problem and get to know some basics just like any secondary school student we never dive deep into them which requires us to solve some problems this is what competitive program programming teaches us and in a completely sport manner or you can compete with your fellow programmer uh, just a minute just a minute just a minute uh yeah. sorry to interrupt so uh, i just want to uh, specify two things here uh one thing is uh, everyone are actually so interactive okay and the other thing is uh, you can actually uh, turn off your video so that it um, minimizes the consumption of data for the other side and also it makes a good performance in the audio as well so uh, please turn off your uh, audio uh, sorry <laughs> video and make it little slower so that it's it's getting little hard for everyone to catch your ramping speed okay so better you slow down your voice and make it little slow and turn off your uh, video please and you are good to go yeah so let's start so competitive coding requires a lot and a lot of hard work dedication and consistency all of which are demanding terms but we can achieve it with a combination of all the three The first thing that you should understand about this uh, sport that is competitive programming is all about attitude. Many of the programmers we see around us are developers who keep brewing up new ideas and methodologies on how to solve real-time problems. While there are some people who all care about to how to get all the test cases passed. So how to approach any problem? So this is just a brief outline which we will be discussing in detail in later slides. The first thing while solving any problem, not just a competitive coding problem. is to understand is to understand it so let's say we want to find the sum of n natural numbers the first thing that we need to understand is what the problem is asking for we need to find the sum of n natural numbers once you fit in with the problem and understand it what it is asking you can move on to the next steps the next step is to determine the algorithms and the data structures that you need to use to solve the problem taking the previous example there are multiple ways to solve it you can either create a iterative way by creating loops to find the sum or you can use a recursive way for the same purpose you can also create a base class and recursive class to find the sum by calling a function multiple times just like we do in recursion uh you can also follow a direct formulation way where you can apply a single formula to derive the solution so as you can see there are multiple ways to solve a single problem and it all depends on which approach you find the most comfortable in to solve the problem the next step comes optimizing the problem the majority of coding platforms have a complexity associated with it in form of time and space so when planning to solve any problem you must ensure that the approach that you are using should fit in with the complexity that is accepted in the problem sometimes an iterative way or a recursive way would not simply do the trick and we have to find a new way to solve the problem this is where the problem solving skills of the person is tested or validated in my advice while solving any problem it is always appreciated if they solve the problem by a brute force technique brute force is a simplistic manner to solve the problem without caring about time and space complexity and you have need to just solve the problem and fit in with the solution that is required once you have a definite approach you can further optimize the solution by various techniques and methods like you can use a hash table instead of an array or you can use more efficient algorithms so coming on to the big question and probably the question that scratch our mind too often when we start competitive programming why is it necessary you might have seen your friends developing cool applications on android or web participating in hackathons or learning new technologies like django or machine learning or web development they are all good since they are part of a learning curve and it is good to invest in your skills 
Developing projects and real-time products are good, especially when you're looking to boost your portfolio and show your developing skills. But what advantages does competitive coding brings that the project development does not? It is actually the problem solving, logic building, and team playing that matters in competitive coding contests. Let me give an example from my side. I participated in Google Hash Code this year, and the contest was held at midnight in the Indian Standard Time. We had our continuous assessment examination coming up next week, so it was quite a thrill for us. We saw the problem, which was actually a variation of the NAPSA problem, and tried to solve the question in our own way. And certainly, that was a midnight time for us, and none of us in the team had actually a very good experience of staying awake for such a long period of time. Naturally, we dozed off, and it was only my senior, Ghosh Bhaiya, who managed to submit a brute force solution and get us a rank something around 2000. But that was not all. We decided to re-optimize the solution and try out various ways. We brainstormed on the solution, optimized it, re-optimized it, and finally arrived at a solution after a week that gave us a rank below 100. So what did it teach us? It taught us how we can leverage logic building to arrive, that op to arrive at optimized solutions for some of the most complex problems. Thinking about a problem and finding its solution makes you more focused. And with an improved logic, you will be, you will be able to think faster and solve the problems faster. Competitive coding is also a guaranteed exercise for people who wish to ace the coding interview and technical rounds like a piece of cake. Many competitive coders practice on Code Chef, Code Forces, and Top Coder. And if you are looking to build a great profile on these platforms, you can put that on your resume. But again, competitive programming won't get you a job. Though you can ace the whiteboard, data structures, and algorithmic algorithm rounds if you have practiced enough. Competitions have a lot in common with the coding interview. From this perspective, competitive programmer programming is definitely useful for technical preparation, technical interview preparation. First, in both cases, you are required to solve coding problems with a time restriction. And competitive programming will also help you in designing and implementing efficient code that can scale and be implemented in real time. And for this, you need to have a strong foundation of data structures and alg algorithm, without which you will not be able to solve even simple problems. Competitive programming is a great resource to sharpen your coding skills. And you don't need to be a top player, but practicing coding problems is highly recommended. So what can you exactly achieve with competitive programming? So the first thing that you do is that you can sharpen your problem solving skills and logic development while solving problems. All the magical complexities like ON or O log N will not be mere terms that you need to mug up for exams, but actual things that you can, but actual things that can make or break you while solving a problem. Competitive programming teaches you uh, the find the easiest solution in the shortest time possible, and it enhances your problem solving and debugging skills, giving you a real time. It is just like a brain sport. Secondly, competitive programming allows you to participate in multiple contests. Does not everyone loves competing? I believe that many of you might have participated in the blind coding round held during the techno summit in our college, and you might have gained the thrill of it. In a similar manner, competitive programming as a skill is mainly used in contests like Google Kickstart, Hashcode, Long Challenges, uh, Kukovs, and more. You start competing against a variety of programmers around the world, and you can also learn from their ways. At the end of the day, it is always the right approach that matters. So let's move on to the next slide. So Gail Lackman McDowell has famously re remarked on a Quora post that competitive programming usually merits an automatic yes from her. Gay Lackman McDowell is the author of the famous book, Cracking the Coding Interview, and I would like to suggest everyone to get their hands on the book if they're preparing for, the, for their interview. You need to understand concepts like array, array list, stack, queue, linked list, recursion, backtracking, and all before starting with this book. Now, when I say to you to understand concepts, you should be able to understand the concept and how it works internally. Coupled with this book, you can start working on real-time implementations, either on a whiteboard, or you can even use an online compiler like Ripple to help you understand the actual implementations. Again, this is not a book for competitive programming, but just to sharpen your acumen for technical, in technical interviews and coding rounds. Get a cue from this book, and it will help you a lot with cracking some basic and intermediate problems. There is no definite course or book that can make you good with competitive coding. It is a practice and practice alone that makes you good at that. So now let's get started with the next topic of our session, how to start competitive programming. I believe that most of the people have now understood that there is a tangible benefit to start competitive coding, not just as a sport, but also to get benefit in technical interviews for your problem solving skills would be put to test. But now the intermediate question arises, 
how to start competitive coding if you go online and search for courses on competitive coding there are n number of courses tutorials and approaches for the same there is no definite approach and it is highly unlikely that one approach would fit the puzzle for everyone but there are certain approaches that fit in best for everyone this approach includes picking up a language for your purpose start practicing and leveraging data structures and algorithm yeah hello kalyan so the brute force is like a very simplistic approach so you actually don't uh, care about the time and space complexity and you just solve the problem so let's say you're trying to solve a fibonacci problem so you will just define the loops for that and you will find a solution brute force solution is actually like more uh, good for coding problems where there is not much time and space complexity but if you need to implement a solution in in a specific time and space complexity you need to have a like a better optimized solution that we have to do using a dynamic programming or any divide and conquer algorithm so let's get started with the first question what language should be coded now there are multiple way options for the same and the most important question is that which language you are most comfortable in the majority of the competitive coders that i know code in c++ and there are tangible benefits for the same that i would explain later some of, uh, other popular languages that you can use for competitive coding are java c python and c sharp but what determines that what language should be selected for the competitive coding the rule of the thumb is that all the languages uh, are more or less equal and what matters the most is the algorithmic solution but what makes a particular language more interesting to work with is that uh, it has very, with the very sort of features that it come with like take the example of c++ we have got standard template libraries uh, which are incredibly, incredibly powerful to work with them and we have got predefined apis for various data structures so we don't need, de even need to implement them when a the contest is going hot and focus more on problem solving in python we have got some external libraries that can simplify our coding part and makes logic building quite easy the one thing that you should keep in mind while selecting any language is that you need to keep your code compact and clean clean code is critical in the software industry as it is perceived as what makes or break a project so now let's have a discussion on some of the popular languages that are used for competitive coding i will be sharing some personal experience with these languages so it will be easy for you to gauge up and get started now let's first start with c++ now c++ has been famously remarked as god's own programming language and it is by far the most popular language for of choice for competitive programmers across the world as it is usually faster than java and python and most of the resources are available in c++ c++ also has a vast library called standard template library which makes a life much more easier for the competitive programmer i believe that most of the participants actually know c++ here so it will be very easy for them to follow up and start solving problems through them however c++ sometimes becomes quite complex to learn so you need to understand some of the algorithmic designs and syntax still deep to leverage it next comes java which is my favorite programming language java is an object oriented programming language just like c++ and is the next most popular programming language other than c++ in competitive coding it has got many libraries and uh, for data structures called collections and it is a bit slower than c++ but uh, it is quite a chance for java code but it uh, java has got a better exception handling so it has got a very tangible benefit if you are like handling big inputs and outputs and uh, lastly comes the python the eye candy for many new programmers python as a language offers very little in terms of safety checks there are no variable declarations no static type assertions no access controls and so on even the syntax has very little redundancy python does exactly what you need to it to do this makes the language much more syntax uh, this makes the language very appealing to beginners one can hop right in and just say what is needed there is little need for safety checks because there are few things which can break however what makes python a bit uh, lackluster during contest is that it is very slow compared to c++ or java nevertheless you can uh, nevertheless you can uh, optimize your code by following some design patterns and it is highly advisable for new programmers to start with c++ so that they can leverage stl and get things done so in my personal opinion languages and data structures are just the two sides of the same coin if you are looking to boost your problem solving you can ignore the you can you, you you can neither ignore the language nor you can ignore the implementation 
So what are the basic data structures that you need to uh, so that you need to know so that you can prepare for competitive coding? These include searching, sorting, trees, graphs, uh, linked list heaps, and to name a few. Sometimes you might encounter also string-based problems where you need to use data structures like try, Burkhardt color trees, and so forth. Before starting with any problem, it is always better for you to take a sheet of paper and visualize a problem that has been presented before you. You can use the data structures and algorithmic concepts that you know of and start with solving the problem. Now, there are multiple ways to solve a problem and the best way is to one that can be best optimized. Now, let's take a question. So let's say you have an array of numbers and you got to find a number which has been appearing only once. Now, so you have got an array where every element has been repeated twice but you've got to find an element which has been repeated only once. The first method you can use to solve this problem is a brute force method. So just check for that one single element using nested loops and you will find it with a time complexity of O n square. But you need to optimize it, isn't it? Now to optimize the problem, you can use hashing. In this method, the element is used as a key and the count of occurrences is used as a value in the hash table. It is an efficient approach, but not the most effective one. So the most effective one would be to XOR all the elements since XOR of a number with itself is zero and hence we can find the number quite easily. The field of optimization encompasses many different fields of models and algorithms. So it is better to explore them and get started with it. There will be multiple times where you're solving a problem and it is quite natural that the algorithm associated with the solution has been unknown to you. Competitive programming is quite similar to a discovery quest or you understand the problem, uh, how do you understand new algorithms and implement them to get started. Now let's get started with the practice. Now lastly, we arrive at the most important postulate of the competitive programming, that is practice. Practice is what makes a person perfect. And I believe that most of the person who are good scorers in subjects like maths and all realize that without practice, there is very little that a person can do. Now, let me recount something from my experience regarding this. A few months back, I was very active on hacker rank and I used to solve multiple problems and my submission graph was at an all time high. But suddenly I was stuck in a problem, in a couple of problems. I tried to implement them multiple times, got a lot of errors, started referring discussion forums and reading editorials, but none was good. That was when I started, um, that was when I stopped practicing and my submissions naturally went down. The mistake that majority of people do is, is that they start practicing and soon land up in a zone where there is no escape. If you're stuck in a similar model, so if you're stuck in a similar model, it is better that it is better that you start reading and start practicing more. And the more you practice, the more you will keep yourself motivated towards the code and the actual implementation. The motivation is the key here. And until and unless you keep yourself motivated and start practicing the problem, there will be no escape out of the model. Now, one more question uh, that many people ask is how often they need to practice. Now, this one really depends upon you. You can spend some time uh, uh, daily. You can spend some time daily and practice a question or two. The more time you spend practicing, the sooner you will be better at it. Now, here comes the most important part with competitive coding, the contests. I believe everyone must have taken part in some coding contests in the past. And it is no surprise that they are well articulated and on a high rush. Now to keep a check on the, your performance, you might want to participate in the contests that are conducted once in a while on various platforms. These included lunchtime, long challenge, cook-offs, and other contests that are held weekly or even monthly. For a beginner, it is quite advisable not to jump directly into the contest. As a beginner, it is more important for you to practice more rather than jump directly to the contest. If you're confident enough to try out your skills, it is better to take part in more shorter contests. They help you improve your speed of thinking. Logical competitions often have hard problems that require more research and less thinking. It is also advisable to take part in competitions as a team. It helps you to see questions from a different point of view. And I would also like to advise that it is better to consult with other teams and even fellow programmers to discuss solution on forums and read others' code, especially top rated programmers to help you understand the best approaches and ways to solve a problem. Making yourself comfortable with uncomfortable is the most important mantra for anyone who is willing to do competitive coding. The majority of the people think that they know only searching and sorting so that they can solve the problem only, only related to that. Now, let me tell you once again that no one is stopping you to try harder problems. And the only thing that matters is how much patience you have while solving any problem. 
there are instances where you can take weeks to solve any problem and you want to study a lot before you can decide and approach for the same competitive programming is a rewarding experience especially with the realize, realization that you have learned something new and implemented it so keep the key of practice with you and you can soon unlock the ways of problem solving and logical thinking so let's now get started with the next topic of our session understanding the best practices to take an example let's consider the search algorithms you can search an algorithm element using linear search in o n time complexity but you can also solve a similar problem using binary search in o log n so using just a few lines of code you can optimize a solution drastically and help you get better with logic building we will also take a look at some of the best practices and strategies to follow in competitive programming so in this session i wish to explain how a competitive programming problem is devised with a simple example here i would advise that every one of you to first understand the problem and if you have a solution for the same then you can unmute and speak up or give an approach in the chat section so let me first explain the problem suppose i am selling chocolates and my chocolate is priced at rupees 1 each to boost up my sales i have an approach for every three chocolate wrappers i would give one chocolate extra a girl comes to me and has got rupees 15 with her so the question asks how many chocolates can she get with that much amount this problem has a recursive approach and iterative one as well as a formulaic approach the answer to this question can be is 22 so it is highly recommended to unmute themselves and discuss an approach where we can solve the problem Uh, I think any issue with the audio? Can everyone hear me? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, Harsh, can you can you hear me, Harsh? I hear you. Can you hear me, Harsh? Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. So uh, one one thing I I want to say here is uh, before getting into this question one about the chocolate wrappers and chocolates, we have few questions here uh, by few people. So you could better uh, yeah, I mean you could better give the answer for that and we can go for the chocolate wrapper question. Okay. And one question we have here is uh, regarding the standard template library. Okay, it's by Kalyan. Okay. Uh, when we yeah. learn STL, uh, can we skip learning data structures and their implementation in depth? So, if you are learning STL, it is it is not advisable for you to skip data structures and algorithm. Most of the STL libraries has got a well defined API. So, if you are like sk skipping up, then you will be missing the very important part of it, the implementation. So, if you are using STL, it is better for you to understand the basic data structures. The basic data structures can be linked list, hash tables. arrays uh, then we have got graphs we have got trees but sometimes while you are solving larger problems it is always better for you to go with standard problem solving and better understand the data structure before you can try them out good okay i hope kalyan got the answer so if kalyan if you have any question you can unmute yourself and raise it and uh, one more thing by kalyan is uh, when we learn uh, using standard template library what is the use of data structures actually let's say because in our college most of the people have studied c in their first semester so c++ was like a very powerful language for them but uh, in c++ we have got standard template libraries we have got templates and all but since uh, krishan's asked that what is the purpose of learning the data structure so if you have the knowledge of standard template libraries and you don't have the knowledge of stl it will be like a suicide for you because you need to understand that how the stl is happening so let me take the example of vectors vectors is immutable vectors is mutable so you can add in elements to it you can uh, pop element, elements out of it but so you need to understand how the vector data structure is performing and how its implementation has been done before you can actually uh, take the vector data structure and use it to solve your problems as the, i think you know who i am has mentioned that never skip data structures and algorithm because until and unless you uh, have a basic understanding of data structures and algorithms you cannot solve even the simplest type of problems Okay, cool. So, if you guys have any more questions, you can unmute unmute now and raise the questions up before we go for the chocolate question. I suppose Sagar has asked uh, how to improve logic building. 
so logic building means many people think that they can read the other people's code and they can improve the logic but logic building can actually be implemented by implementing your own code so let's say like i want to optimize my search algorithms so for optimizing my search algorithms i can use binary i can use linear search as my first algorithm but if you want to re-optimize your problem you can use a binary search if you want to further re-optimize your problem you can use interpolation search or you can use fibonacci search so as you get uh, go from one step one step to another step you will get better at optimizing and re-optimizing the problem and this is where you can build your logic building logic is all about solving the problems as many problems as you solve the, uh, you will get a better logic regarding that problem so any more doubts yeah So how do I balance between coding and skill development like web development or machine learning? I exactly asked the same question to one of my relatives who is actually a Java developer. So what he mentioned that it is quite better to invest a majority of your time in competitive coding because when you are going in technical interviews, it is quite a good thing to have uh, projects related to web development or machine learning on your portfolio. But at the end of the day, it is uh, you will be getting an online compiler and you have to code your problem out. And this problem will not be related either to machine learning or web development. It will be completely re related to, to competitive coding or how you can solve a problem using, pro using logic building and data structures. So if you are thinking to balance your time, it is better to invest a majority of your time in developing your competitive coding skills, logic building and problem solving. And if you get some extra time, it is quite a better for you to start investing in projects so that you can boost your resume and your, and your portfolio. Uh, Harsh, I want to add one point more to this as well. So I got a similar question, uh, for maybe from Instagram, I guess. So uh, I just want to really answer this question specifically. Uh, one thing is when we go for this uh, something called competitive coding, uh, and also there is other part where really we are so fascinated, like we are really fascinated about a web development, like fascinated about Android, machine learning, and these all the things. I know, I know, I know, I know the truth that thing you go for some technology and you start digging into it and you skip it and you go for the next one and you go for the next one and you say AI and you say ML and you say web, Android, a lot of things you jump up and you forget to connect them back. The same thing happens with the competitive coding of something we call like data structures and algorithms in the first place. And the other thing is your external kind of development skills, as you mentioned. So what I would say you is you can actually manage them. When, when I say that you can manage them, you can make the data structures, the grip and the better stuff. Once you got really good, strong in it, the whole thing, what you learn from this can actually be implemented in your development skills. That is the core intentions. That is the core belief, right? That is the whole purpose of the competitive coding where you need to build the logic, right? So the whole thing is you have one dot like the competitive coding and the, you know, all this programming stuff, which for the computations and data structures, all this stuff for the one dot. Another one is like skills, like development, developer roles of skills like you have to build something, right? So the whole purpose of entire being an engineer, it's like you need to connect these two dots. It's not like I want to be here and I lose it. It's not like I we do this, I don't want to do that. It's like you have to do things where you have to connect them, right? Learn them and connect them. So the whole intention, if you don't connect them, you make it like worthless, okay? You just be them, make it done, and then connect them whatever, maybe it's ML, maybe it's web, maybe it's Android, whatever, everything has a complete relation with community coding. So once you make the relation stronger, you become stronger, okay? So let's get, so let's get back to the problem. So anyone has any approach to solve this particular problem i've sent a coding uh, coding i'll just see if it's okay correct or not uh, actually i think uh, you understood the problem wrong so now let me rephrase the problem and uh, try to make you understand the logic so let's say the girl has got 15 rupees and each chocolate bar and each chocolate costs one rupees each so you can get 15 wrappers uh, so you can get a 15 wrappers in total 15 chocolates for and 15 wrappers you can exchange the five wrappers for five more chocolates so now you have 15 chocolates without wrappers and five chocolates with wrappers 
Now exchange three more wrappers for this particular chocolate. Now you have got 18 chocolates without wrappers and two plus one chocolates that is three with wrappers. And again, if you exchange the three wrappers for one more chocolate, so you have got 21 plus one that is 22 chocolates. Okay. okay. Any more suggestions regarding how to solve this problem? Come on, guys. Try to do a solution or even an approach. So why are we even using the cost of, cost of chocolates? We can try using for loop and if condition, right? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, so the time will be decreased. The time complexity will be less, right? Yeah. So if you are using like a iterative way, the time complexity will be O N. And there is also a population way. So in that way, the time complexity will be O1. So if you are looking for a time complexity somewhere near O N, it is better to go with an iterative way. But if you are looking for a linear time complexity solution, then it is better for you to go with a formulaic way. The space comp if you use for loop and if condition means uh, the space complexity will be the same and the time com complexity will be decreased, right? So it's the best way, I guess. Yeah, it is the best way the second best way actually the best way is by using a formula yeah. and which you can achieve by breaking down this problem into multiple sub problems and solving each of them separately and while you solve each of them separately you will arrive at a common formula which you can use to solve all the sub problems and the main problem itself okay. yeah. so any more approaches So now let me just explain that what are the components of a problem statement. So let me show up a problem from the uh, let me show up a code shape problem from this April long challenge to explain this much better. The first part of the problem is the problem statement itself. Now uh, this was what we saw in the last slide. In a few lines of the statement, the problem is explained and the requirements are stated. Next comes the constraints. So you can see these constraints here, constraints here, and this matters as it explains what can be the limit of input size. The majority of the time while initializing the variables, we use integer or float variables. But to handle larger inputs, we need to use something like log integers or double, which can store larger inputs and print larger outputs. In Java, we have got something like a big integer class, which can do the job easily. Next comes the input value and the output values. This is, this is what makes your sample test cases. This is what makes your sample test cases, which, can, which you can use to test your code on a local environment. Finally comes the input and the output format, which, which you can see here. Finally comes the input and the output format, uh, who you need to add to so that you can uh, give, up the print give up the scanning statements and the print statements accordingly. Finally comes the test cases. So here are the sample test cases are, these are the sample test cases itself. After you submit a problem, there will be final test cases which will be used to validate that your uh, code is correct or not. So now let's move back to the earlier problem. So this is what the code for the problem is. So I have used an iterative way to solve this problem in O and time complexity. So first you, you first you calculate the number of chocolates that you can have. So for 15 rupees, you can have 15 chocolates. So now let, let's create a while loop, which checks if the number of wrappers that we have are greater than or equal to the number of wrappers that is required to exchange a chocolate. That is three. So inside the while loop, what I will do that I will decrement the number of wrappers by three and increment the total number of wrappers and the chocolate by one. So this process will be continuing for an end number of times and we will finally get our answer. So this is by far the most naive problem that you can find in any competitive coding contest. But this problem actually shows actually show us how we can solve the problem using a variety of ways. Now let me tell you this is still not the most efficient way to solve the problem. You can have a solution with O1 time complexity by simply using a formula for the same. But how can we devise the 
for this. This is where we bring ourselves to the concept of sub problems can be devised by breaking down a problem into multiple parts and then solving each of them independently. But well, how can we do that? Now you can simply devise a problem and check how many chocolates that you can get if you have a different amount. Once you calculate and recalculate them, you will arrive at a formula which you can use to solve the problem with just a snap of a finger. Next comes the online judges. These are actually systems that evaluate your code and calculate the total time taken for execution and space occupied by the code. They also verify if the code submitted by a particular user is correct by comparing the test cases and checking if they comply with the time and space complexity given in the question. Now working with online judges is always tricky and requires you to leave out redundant ways while you are coding. Now many of the people in Indian colleges uh, include a code your header file while coding in C or C++. And they use functions like get ch or clrscr. These redundant ways are always dangerous while you're implementing your code on an online platform. You might get a compilation error even if your logic and the code flow is correct. So while you, you are using CodeChef or top order online judges, it is often recommended to use scanf, printf instead of cnc out for faster input and output. Now these are some of the optimizations that you can do with your code while coding and these tricks will be shared in a common doc file that I will be sharing at the end of the session. So how can we solve a given competitive coding problem? Time is considered as a prime factor in tie breaking for ranking participants with the same sports and programming content. So you need to save the time and to save the time you must first understand the problem as fast as possible which depends on how you're reading a programming question. In any competitive coding contest there are various levels of question. First comes the easy one. Problems in this category are considered very easy and based on simple implementation. This problem also matters a lot in tie breaking as most of the programmers submit their solutions uh, to the key of problem in the first five minutes of the contest. The basic strategy to solve this problem is to be as fast as possible and to save time by re avoiding reading the complete question. Try to look at the test cases at the first and the input and the output format which are explained in the problem statement. Most of the times this comes to be more sufficient uh, to solve any sort of problem. Now there are some problems that are not based upon any data structure or algorithmic concepts. And they primarily Bro. aim to test the analytical skills of the programmer. Yeah. One small doubt. Uh, what's code chef and uh, do we really need to resume? Uh, can you please uh, Hello. state your problem Hello. once again? I was not able to follow it. What's code chef? What's code chef? Do we really need it on our resume? What's yes, code chef? You can chef? put your uh, code chef. Yeah. Can you please repeat your problem once again? I was not able to follow up. What is code chef? Do we really hmm. need it on our resume? No, see, code chef yeah. is just as a platform. Like we have multiple platforms for competitive coding. Hacker Rank is there, Hacker Earth is there, Code Chef is there, Top Coder is there. So Code Chef is not necessary to have uh, on the, on your portfolio. But if you are a Code Chef rated programmer, it is always good to have the rating. Like let's say I am a two two star rated programmer. In India, there are many programmers who are six star or seven star rated. So they obviously have a very good impression on interviews and technical bounds. It is upon, yeah. all upon your choice. If you are comfortable in uh, doing problems on code ship, it is quite good. If you're comfortable in doing problems on top coder or code forces or hacker, it is all upon your choice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the information. So there are some problems which are not based upon any data structures and algorithms. So they primarily aim to test the analy analytical skills of the programmer. So these problems are based upon any mathematical concept or string implementations. So while reading this problem, try to avoid the story part of the problem statement. Just like we saw in the earlier slides, I gave a problem regarding the chocolate wrappers and we had a story regarding this. So try to avoid uh, reading the story part of that problem. And once you read the problem, it will be sufficient to solve it. But you must be careful enough to have the enough time to not miss any concept. So while solving any sort of intermediate problems, which are usually based upon uh, some data structures or algorithm, the first concept that you need is to read the question at least twice. If you're not able to understand the question, read it as many times as you want. And unless you figure out what the problem needs to be solved, once you get the logic, it is all about coding it in a language of your choice. Always refer to the question while coding and you can write down the name of the variables you need to declare. Some formulas mentioned in the question so that you don't forget them in the long run. 
Some of the programmers while solving complex problem tend to have a mathematical proof before they start coding. First of all, except in some cases like combinatorics or number theory based problems, where you have to do algebraic manipulation and find close form expressions, you can do most of the proofs in your head. If you're a beginner level coder, I would suggest that you need to spend a little more time working out the path from the question to the solution in your head. Once again, no need for a rigorous proof, but a sketch of the logical steps in your mind or, or on a paper. If you do this a few times, you will start internalizing the whole process and it will happen much quicker for any type of problem. After you have coded with the best algorithm, matching time space complexity and satisfying the test cases, submit the solution. Repeat the process until you receive the accepted signal which shows that your solution has been accepted. So now let's discuss the most important technique that you can use to solve the competitive coding problems, dynamic programming. Most difficult problems asked in coding interviews and in interviews of higher product-based IT companies like Google or Microsoft or Amazon are from dynamic programming. It is an approach to solve the problem which has been discussed in almost every algorithm book, especially my favorite one, which is introduction to algorithms. But in majority of the courses and in majority of the books, dynamic programming is a, like a left out chapter. Dynamic programming discusses complex problems like matrix chain multiplication, knapsack problem, egg throwing problem and more. But you need to understand the complex problem and how to absorb it rather than getting into the crux of the concept. But why do we actually care for dynamic programming? We have various techniques like brute force, divide and conquer, greedy approach, but what makes dynamic programming so special? Now, let me take an example. I want to compute the 80th term of the Fibonacci series. I wrote the rampant recursive function and I waited for the result. Naturally, it would take a lot of time and space for me. Last time I checked, it would take my well-optimized C++ code to throw the solution after a wait for a few seconds. A recursive solution usually neither passes all the test cases in a coding competition, nor does it impress the interviewer in a company interview like Google or Microsoft. The most difficult question asked in competitive co uh, co uh, competitions and interviews are from dynamic programming. So in short, dynamic programming is all about ordering your computations in a way that avoids recalculating duplicate work. You have a problem, you have a main problem and you have a lot of sub problems. So when I started to learn algorithms, it was hard for me to understand the main idea of dynamic programming and how was it different from divide and conquer. When it gets to comparing these two paradigms, usually the Fibonacci function comes to the rescue as a great example. But when we are trying to solve the same problem using both dynamic programming and divide and conquer approaches, we need to explain for each of them. And it feels for me that we may lose valuable details that might help to catch the difference later. Both work by recursively breaking down a problem into two or more sub-problems of the same or related type. And until these become simple enough to be solved directly, the solutions of the sub-problem are then combined to give a solution of the original problem. Dynamic programming approach extended uh, approach extends actually the divide and conquer approach with two techniques, memorization and tabulation that both have a purpose of storing and reusing sub problems that may drastically improve performance. Memorization refers to the technique of caching and reusing previously computed results. The tabulation is similar but focuses on filling the entries of the cache. Computing the values in the cache is the easiest done iteratively. Dynamic programming is an extremely hard craft to master, but once you have mastered it, keep confidence in yourself that there is nothing that can bring you down. So how can you solve any dynamic programming problem? Dynamic programming uh, is breaking down problem into smaller subproblems and storing the results of those, of those subproblems to ensure that each subproblem is solved only once. What are subproblems? So subproblems are actually the subversions of the original problem. If formulated correctly, subproblems are built on each other in order to obtain the solution to the original problem. Now let me understand this with the help of the Fibonacci example. So let's say we are requested to find the fifth Fibonacci number here. The fourth Fibonacci number and the third Fibonacci number are sub-problems to the original, sub -prob original problem to find the fifth Fibonacci number. In a similar manner, the third Fibonacci number and the second Fibonacci number are sub-problems to the fourth Fibonacci number. We can go on creating a tree like this. So here you can see that in the evaluation process of the Fibonacci number five, we are calculating Fibonacci number three twice, which in turn calculates Fibonacci number, second Fibonacci number twice. So instead of calculating the second Fibonacci number and the third Fibonacci number again and again, we can, what we can actually do is to store the value of them and then we can calculate them the, for the first time and use them whenever needed in the future. So when subproblems are needed again and again, that categorizes overlapping subproblem. 
storing the value of overlapping sub problems optimizes our solution so that we can avoid computation needed to compute the same sub problem again and again like in this example of fibonacci numbers the sub the second fibonacci number is calculated almost three times we do not gain anything by storing results for non overlapping sub problems like in binary search where we can actually use a sense of storing the results for sub array since the sub problem will not be used again so you can see that using a dynamic programming approach we can solve the fibonacci number with a much lesser time complexity i hope we can discuss the fibonacci dynamic programming in great length some other day so let's move on to our next topic of our discussion finding the right platform so now you have understood what competitive coding is and how it can actually boost your problem solving skills and how is, is it beneficial to understand coding in much depth but now arises the important question uh, what are some of the best platforms to practice i mean you can see multiple platforms but which one is the most appropriate one to get started with so let's start by discussing my most favorite platform hackerrank so hackerrank is by far one of the most popular uh, website for practicing competitive coding it has got awesome tracks on languages like c c++ java python and it has got a separate track for problem solving and algorithms hackerrank has got an awesome user interface and questions and they have well defined and they are well defined using editorials and they have and if you are stuck somewhere you can always refer to editorials or the discussion forums now next comes the hack another platform is hackerrank and though it is quite similar to hackerrank it hosts weekly and monthly contests many companies also hold their recruitment drive over hacker which you can participate to get a gist of how a technical interview is conducted in addition hacker earth has got an awesome track named named as code monk which is a weekly series to help the beers strategy programming and data structures and algorithm govi has also a series of problems that can be used to practice competitive coding on their platform on their code kata platform but problems are segregated based upon the difficulty level and the topic of interest now Let's come on to on to some niche platforms like Code Chef, like Code like Code Chef, Top Coder, and Code Forces. These platforms are these platforms are designed these platforms are designed for hardcore competitive coding, and the problems on these platforms are certainly well above a beginner level. These platforms hold weekly and monthly contests, and they give a beginner and they give a and they give a proper rating to the programmer based upon the performance in the contest. Competing platforms. Requires utmost dedication. You need to keep your rating intact, and in case your performance falls, your ratings would also fall. Out of the three pro platforms, Codechef is better suited for Indian audiences, as their contests are held according to the Indian standard time. Code Forces is also an amazing platform if you're looking for a learning opportunity with an exponential curve. Yeah, Harsh, one minute. Uh, just, just, just. Yeah, yeah, Harsh, yeah, okay. so it's it's going really good and one thing i want to mention here is uh, your screen got stuck if you go to the slides ahead and few people are having issues that they couldn't able to view your screen so it's better if you could uh, raise screen back I think there is a net Bro, issue from my question. net issues from my side. Yeah, sure. One small question. Uh, when yeah, can, uh, can you try? Oh, okay, okay. Can you try uh, sharing your screen now? Yeah, let me just try. When is that? I'm not able to share my screen. All right, no issues. Yeah, I I can I can help you in this. Okay, this is the slide you are in, right? Actually, we can see. Yani Raj you can go ahead with your question
bro when are the, when is the session going to end we we are going to soon wind up maybe yeah. we have couple of slides like two to three yeah once it done we are going to end up yeah hush please continue i can walk you through the slides okay sure Is the screen visible now? So what are the competitions that you can participate in? So first competition, the so first comes the ACM ICPC, abbre abbreviated as an International Collegiate Programming Contest. And it is a multi-tier team-based programming competition. So it is quite simply the oldest, largest, and the most pre prestigious programming contest in the world. So it ICPC has got two rounds. The first one is a regional, and the second one is the world finals. The regionals are organized by the local universities of different regions spread across the globe. The winners of these regional rounds of the contests get to represent the country in the ACM ICP World Finals. The pick of the crop from every regional site locks on at the World Finals. If you want to participate in ICPC, you need to be master of the trade. If you have a very good knowledge of solving particular problems, you become a integral part of the team, and you can form and you can contribute significantly. You also need to work in a team, and sometimes the best coders in your school may not prove to, prove to be the best team members. Find team members who gave up a significant part of their life and help each other towards a common goal. Other than ICPC, we have got Google Code challenges like Hashcode, Kickstart, and Code Jam. My team, TBash, participated in Hashcode this year and secured a rank around 2,200 at an All India level. While in the extended, extended round, we did much better and got a rank of 30 at an All India level. Hashcode is a time contest, and usually only one problem statement is given, which spans across few pages and checks the core problem solving skills. This year's Hashcode problem was a variation of the popular knapsack problem, and the goal was to find the highest score by scanning different books in a library. Every year's Hashcode has one common aim, to solve an optimization problem in four hours with a team of a two to four people. Other than this, we have got Google Kickstart, which heavily focuses on data structures and algorithmic concepts and has a series of program problems to solve. Google Code Jam, Facebook Hacker Cup, Hacker Cup are other concepts, are other uh, comp competitive coding contests, which you can try out. If you're looking for occasional contests, code shift challenges are quite good, quite cons which consists of long challenges, cook off, lunch time, and more. So let's move on to the next slide. Many people by now, I suppose, have gained a notion that competitive programming is utmost necessary at college level if you're looking for a job in some product-based company. However, it is actually far from the truth at least. Competitive coding is highly addictive, and many of the prog programmers fall prey to this addiction and forego their academics and side projects and development just to excel in getting a much higher rank in their contest. 
many technical recruiters including many many in the top notch silicon valley companies like google or facebook use competitive programming as a yardstick to measure the suitability of a candidate candidate for the for a software engineering position as a result these days people do competitive programming just to get a job not for fun many computer science engineering students who are not very good at competitive programming think that it is the only way to build a good career in this area they get into depression they stop searching for other ways and many eventually give up and accept their fate what you should remember at such a time is hard work can only yield results when you hold a belief in yourself and this belief can be generated only by motivation and practice many competitive programmers write code that is messy difficult to understand and by far far from being understood and used in any production based environment obviously this has implications and bad coding practices has serious repercussions also we have got a serious issue of plagiarism in the competitive coding contests people cheat in every form of sport and competitive programmer programming is not an exception it can sometimes be really hard to spot the cheaters in competitive programming sometimes the cheaters end up being declared as winners also now majority of the coding platforms use moss as a plagiarism detector which can find similarity in logic code and if you if your code is detected as plagiarized it can have serious repercussions you should take competitive coding as a sport where you can win and lose sometimes making it a issue of personal dignity will only change the game spirit so how to equip yourself for a competitive coding contest the first and the foremost thing that you should have is basic understanding of the concepts for data structures and algorithm everything comes later next if you are programming in c++ a ready made template always comes handy while coding there are several cases in which template programming in c++ comes handy in everyday programming situations it can help you minify some of your code let's say you need to find the maximum maximum of two numbers we don't need to write the code for it once again but can just define a template for the same purpose c++ has got some awesome features in setting up macros and this will come handy during contest you can take a look at my template given in the link here to see how you can do more in the coding contests if you are using a scripting language like python or javascript for competitive coding then it is recommended for uh, recommended to use a interpreter to speed up the execution time if you are using python the pypy interpreter significantly speeds up solution without changing a single line of code get to know your language libraries especially the standard ones you often don't need to write the common code such as sorting or implementing a priority queue also learn regex if possible which is a powerful tool for string matching they are very useful for parsing and they can get sometimes weird for long inputs but you should you should understand them well before you use them for your purpose and lastly comes the most important advice is not to put your code online and until a particular contest gets over many programmers few years back uh, used to use ideon as an online ide to test their code before they can submit them on any program on any platform during an ongoing contest the code on ideon was public and this led to people indulging in plagiarism and malpractices to get the code if you're coding on a local environment you can set up your vs code or sublime accordingly or if you prefer an online environment prefer using repel for coding you can share your code after the contest gets over so that you can refer to them later and it is a good practice which paves way for open source contribution as well finally there are some of the resources that i would like to share and recommend to you as a beginner i will be sharing a doc file with you uh, guys so that after the session gets over which will contain a much exhaustive list of the resources so the final question re remains how to improve competitive programming if you are a beginner it's important for you to learn some basic concepts participate as participating in many competitions won't really help you read about an important data structures or algorithm from a book or a blog and solve questions related to that repeat the process until you are comfortable with, with basics if you already know the basics do what really uh, so what really helps you here is taking part in a real competition you should try to learn you should try to learn solve problems that require an understanding of multiple concepts try to read editorials and solve problems you couldn't solve during the competition and prefer to read, read editorials and other code also try to learn optimization tricks you can get from that particular code if you're already a hardcore programmer it is better to start participating in large larger contests prepare a team and learn the weakness of your team members and try to fill that gap learn extremely advanced concepts and corresponding mathematics you should try to solve the hardest problem in the contests at this point the key to becoming a good competitive programmer is persistence and practice and with this we finally arrive at the end of the session if you have any questions regarding competitive programming or data structures algorithm in general you can just shoot it now so that i will be able to answer it
Awesome. Yeah, it's it went really good. And uh, guys, if you have any questions related to competitive group programming or any other things, you can you can open up. So we have uh, Abiram as well and uh, Harsh and and uh, yeah, mostly. So if you have any specific question, maybe to the DAC team or to the Harsh or anything, you can just open it up. One small question. One small question. Uh, Sorry. So Nidhi. what is the main what, what yeah, is the yeah, main use ahead. of the data? What is the main use of the data so here? Just competitive coding. Sorry, sorry, Neeraj. Can you repeat it again? What is the main use of the data structure in this competitive coding? Okay. So uh, Harsh, would you like to take so, that? Yeah. So the main use of having data structures and algorithmic concepts in any competitive coding contest is that they allow you to solve any particular problem. So that if you can go to code shape or you can go to code forces, you will see that majority of the problems have the basic data structures and algorithmic concepts revolving around them, be it string, be it string matching, be it searching, be it sorting, be it graph entry. Majority of the harder problems are related to graph tree and much more complex concept that require you to have a knowledge of multiple algorithms at the same time. So as I said before, competitive coding content, competitive coding problems can be categorized into two manners. The first one, one are easy ones. So they mostly test your analytical skills and they are basically derived from any mathematical formula. The next ones are basically dependent upon the whole data structures and algorithmic concepts. So you need to have an understanding for them before you can get started with them. Yeah, totally. Okay. So, and uh, one more thing needed, you can also have take it another way. Uh, where when you say why do I really need data structures and algorithms like when we go for competitive programming where it nowhere comes in the part the thing is uh, the best when we uh, look into data structures and algorithms the only thing that we need to look for the takeaway is what you're going to take from it right so when you go for some you know we have a couple of like a lot of lot of uh, uh, inbuilt methods that you can perform sorting right when you go for python you say sort or you sort it or no matter there are a lot of lot of sorting methodologies that you can do the uh, irrespective of the programming languages but when you go for uh, data structures and algorithms there is specific different ways of uh, doing sorting like algorithm, various algorithms like uh, you know go for the uh, quick sort bubble sort and insertion sort we get a couple of them we have a lot of selection sort as well but why do we really need to learn that is because only for the takeaways okay these takeaways Will help you to be good at in the competitive coding. So when I say takeaways, what you actually mean is when you go for, uh, uh, you know, you go for insertion sort, you see how you traverse through the array and you make the sorting in the behind you, right? When you go for merge sort, the best takeaway is how could you actually implement in the recursion manner, right? How you break down the divide and conquer stuff in the merge sort, and you can actually break down things and you merge them to get the solution out. But you use two strategies. One is uh, the paradigm, that is the divide and conquer. Another one is the programming uh, pattern, that's um, recursion. So the, the takeaway, we need to look at the takeaway. What the takeaway from this uh, specific merge sort is one is the recursion implementation, the best part. Another one is how you perform the divide and conquer. So the whole thing is of this data structures algorithms is to get the intuition and to take the takeaways and these takeaways will surely help you in the competitive coding. So that is the whole thing that I want to say. I thought uh, the algorithm only helps us uh, to reduce the diamond phase complexity. That I thought that was the only use. But Sorry, uh, Neeraj, I couldn't understand that. Uh, I thought that. Uh, the algorithms and structures uh, will only help us to reduce the time and space complexity. But oh, it, I didn't know that it, it had this many helps users. Yeah, there are multiple takeaways that you can look into it, right? When you say for the time complexity, so that is also one of the takeaways that you can take from the algorithms which are written priorly. Uh, one more doubt. Will you guys do Flutter workshop? Okay, it's a request. Cool. So it's a flutter workshop. All right, we are open for it. So how many of you guys, uh, we have 22 participants at the end. So let me know in a quick pool, like how many of you want the flutter session or if you want any other sessions, maybe on Android, maybe on web, just put it in the chat. Let us see like actually, how it goes. Me and Akash, actually me and Akash you know stood a little bit. Just we are, we are asking for a session to not even know better. That's what we're asking. Sure, sure, sure. We are always open. Yeah, it's actually good, good coming out. So that's what we actually expect. 
Yeah, and Hardik was requesting for Android session. So this is how we got to know. So now Neeraj, it's good that you said us that you are requesting for a, uh, that you are expecting for a uh, Flutter session. So we can actually do it for the next time, right? So yeah, we have uh, we have Mohit is also looking for the Flutter session. If anyone else also looking for that, let us know. We can actually call a few uh, the people and also maybe the student developers or Google developer experts, whoever, so they can actually guide you through in that way. Sure, sure. Thank you, Neeraj. We'll actually look into it. Sure, sure. And Hartik, thank you for okay. your question for the Android session. Yeah. Any more questions related to a competitive programming or logical programming or this session, so DSC or whatever? We can go ahead. Uh, most of them would ask mainly for the how to crack the interviews and so on. Most of them. Okay. <laughs> so, um, when we say like uh, cracking the interviews, in yeah. my perspective, yeah, if you right. specifically ask. Hmm. Sorry, Neeraj, you're saying something? Okay. Uh, no, no, it, not, it was on my road. Some might ask. Sorry, Neeraj, I couldn't hear you actually. You can put it in the chat as well. Okay. Okay. Okay, some of them might ask, uh, what is the main thing to track an interview uh, and uh, give a brief session about that? Some might ask, some of them might ask that. Okay, it's it, no matter some of them ask, or you ask, or whoever ask it, it's yeah, the same yeah, solution. Yeah. That. Okay, yeah, so the, the thing is, uh, when we go for tracking an interview, there are multiple phases. Okay, when I say multiple phases, it depends on the company as well. Okay, if you are so specific about specific company, then you gotta look in through what is the main 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 you know what they are expecting. Okay, the first thing is the expectation, right? You go for some startups, they don't actually expect. What well, I mean, I'm 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 just telling my own experience that I've been through. So when I go for startups, interviewing interviewing interviewed by them, so I don't see they are actually expecting kind of like pro level of like seven star coders. They don't expect. Uh, when you go for startups, they expect you to be good at technologies, you to be good at implementation, you to be good at making the things done and ready. Okay, so that's how the startup thing looks. So if you are so committed, if you are so good at doing the things and you're being committed about something that you are supposed to do, then it's all done. It's all really done. So that's how uh, the startup way of looking into the things. And when you go for like a trade companies, when you go for Google, Amazon, and many other things, the whole thing, like you just Google it. There are a lot of lot of uh, phases. They look, they look for the programming stuff in the beginning, and they look for some other stuff. And there is a couple of phases in it, and you go ahead for that. But before we dive through into that, first thing is we gotta create something called a purpose, right? So when you are so specific about what your purpose is, then you can actually go through it because um, you know. Organizing the things will lead to mastery. Okay, so just organize yourself. And when you go for a specific company, if you say like I'm going to go for a startup company, I really want to learn how to build and things. So concentrate on building along with the complete and the logical building. So you don't really need to be, uh, you know, going through competitive programming and uh, winning all the championships. No need those all. All all the things is if you're so interested, it's always good. But the whole important thing is they look for your logical skills. Okay, so if the interviewer, if you are really wanted to impress him or just making done not to impress. So the whole thing is they expect you to have really good logical skills. So that logical skills along with your development work and when you feel that you are so ready about it, then you're good to go. So that's it. Okay. So we are open up for a few more questions. Okay, any chances of ExploreML program? Uh, ExploreML is on the edge. One thing is by it's, okay, if people doesn't know what uh, ExploreML program is, uh, it's a, it's an initiative by Google developer groups. So they have this some um, program called ExploreML. 
what they do is explore machine learning for in you know, various kinds of strategies, maybe in a beginner level, advanced level, and some sort of things. But the whole intention of ML facilitated stuff is all about, um, you know, introducing these ML concepts and everything to the students, specifically for the students. So that thing, so we can plan for that as well. Not, not about M explore ML, but we can make you to explore ML with various programs. That would be better. But as I'm really not sure as ML program, ML facilitated stuff is actually on the edge. So I'm not sure about it, but what you can get from explore ML program, we can get through with various programs. Okay. All right, uh, Harsh, you, you, would you like to add anything before we move ahead? No, oh, it is fine. The session is at, at an end. Awesome, thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Keep coming up and we got really good recommendations today and suggestions about Android and Flutter and Explore ML. These are all the things we'll be looking into it. For sure, we're gonna have them further, maybe not in order, maybe in series, no, uh, no sort of order, but we'll show both of that. Sure, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us and keep coming up. And that's it. And we'll be sharing all the resources what her shared with you. And we'll be mailing up the things as well. Okay. So see you later. Thank you. Good night. Good night.